substituting in the rate equation. So that's where the rate constant shows up. And now the conversion that I get from my material balance, I can solve for K. Oh, sorry, so solve for x. Why are we saying sigma is zero? Where do I say sigma is zero? Right there. Delta or whatever it is. The thing with the oh. one plus squiggle x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it an A to B reaction? Yeah, he doesn't specify it, but it is. So I can write conversion as a function of the residence time and the rate constants and nothing else. Why do I need to write it in terms of rate constants? Right, because that's where the temperature dependence comes from. And everybody see where tau comes from? All right, I have volume and I have volumetric flow rate. If I divide, I get the residence time. OK, so I have one equation done that relates conversion to temperature based on things we know, right, tau. And we get that from the material balance. Now we're going to do it again. Starting with the energy balance. There, that's temperature minus the inlet temperature for that species, Ti comma zero. That's the inlet temperature for each species. Okay, so adiabatic, meaning what? And we'll say I'll point out, as I did earlier, that for most fluids, we can neglect the shaft work. So, I mean, if you're given the shaft work, use it. But if you're not given it, assume it's equal to zero for a CSTR. OK, and so these both go away. And now I have this equation. We've already gone through an example today of how do we calculate delta H of reaction at the reference temperature. How do I calculate the change in reaction heat capacities or the average reaction heat capacity if I give you the individual average heat capacities. If I don't, then you can use the, the empirical formulas that we put on the board and integrate it. And then you get the flow times x. The flow is on this side too, so you see the flows also drop out. There's conversion and all these things we've dealt with today again. So you end up with, now you solve the energy balance equation for temperature as a function of conversion. 
Now, coming back to here, do we have temperature explicitly in our conversion from material balances? Yes, no, maybe? No. We know the equation, right? So we have to solve for K as a function of temperature. What temperature do we use? Not the change, just the temperature at which the reaction is taking place. Remember, this is a CSTR. So non-isothermal doesn't mean there's a change in temperature. It means that your inlets are at a different temperature than your reaction, right? A batch reactor can be non-isothermal. I start it and it heats up or cools off. A flow reactor can be non-isothermal because the inlet temperature is different from the outlet temperature, so it's different at every point along the reactor bed. A CSTR is, again, non-isothermal for the same reason. It just means that the reactants are coming in at a different temperature than the reaction is taking place at. It doesn't mean that the temperature is changing from one side of the CSTR to the other. All right, so we know how to solve for that, and so you get And then you can calculate volume from design equation, or vice versa. Just depends on what you're asked. So just a quick example, if delta Cp is conveniently equal to zero, and theta B, and all the other inlet streams are zero, and it's adiabatic, and we're neglecting the shaft work, then this equation just becomes the inlet temperature plus conversion times the heat of reaction at standard conditions. Divided by the average heat capacity for species A. So that would be if I gave you a problem where I'm asking you for the outlet temperature and the volume. And that's sometimes what you get. Other times, uh, in other words, I'm giving you a conversion. Other times, you're going to be asked to find conversion and temperature. for a given volume and operating conditions. And so if I write out both my energy balance and my material balance, and I can solve <coughs> both simultaneously, and so for example, the conversion from the energy balance so is this adiabatic? no guesses? The UA term is Q. So a lot of times you'll see where they just go ahead and they substitute in the energy balance on the cooling stream. And sorry, that's little a. Again, that's the heating balance on the cooling stream. So that's temp TA is the temperature of the cooling stream. 
So this is assuming, as we did at the end of that derivation, that the mass flow rate of the cooling stream is pretty high, so that the temperature change in the cooling stream is quite low. Subscript. Yeah, it's the temperature of the cooling stream. And remember, we were using like TA1 and TA2 for the inlet and outlet. If it's always the same, we just use T subscript A. And then from the material balance, The volume times the rate expression expressed now as a function of conversion and temperature, and then the flow rate. Just to keep up with that, that's delta CP half, right? And the denominator of that is delta CP Yeah, half. thank you. Yeah, they should, they should all be hats because there's no integral term. So if we look at the conversion from the energy balance, and we want to plot conversion versus temperature, what kind of function is that? So this first, the numerator is linear in T, but what, there's also, it's also in the denominator. So which of these denominator terms is going to be more important? Delta H of reaction or this heat capacity term? Delta H of reaction. So because 